So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Pauline Black. I'd just like to thank everybody for coming along tonight. I mean, it's, I've been here, I think, since about 11 o'clock today, because I caught a really early train from Coventry, uh, which is where I still live. Um, and because uh, I thought it's Friday the 13th, so something <laughs> is bound to happen that's really dreadful. Um, so I'm pleased that the obvious didn't happen, which is one man and a dog, and the dog was bored. So um, I'll just get on with it. I think probably the best thing to do with this book, which is called Black by Design, is um, to start at the beginning, to do something from the middle, and to do something towards the end. Um, just so that, because it's kind of split into three parts, which is the early years, the middle years, the famous bit, and the latter years, the less famous bit, the middle years. I think that before I start this, I should, uh, there's a character in here called Romaine. And Romaine was, uh, this is, when I say the middle years, this was when the selector was going which, um, that's me and the selector over there, and I'm on here. And we were on tour in America, and this would have been 1980, about April, May 1980. And uh, Romaine was our redneck tour bus driver. And I think he was pretty pissed off that he got us, um, because he spent the whole of the six-week tour telling us that normally he took out Dolly Parton, so I guess we, we were a bit exacting, really, for him. But he, in this particular extract, he actually came up trumps. He, he was not a bad guy, I don't think. He just hadn't really encountered any black people. A flatbed truck turned up with several burly men on the back, all ominously sporting baseball bats. It pulled over to the side of the road behind the tour bus. Immediately, Romaine approached them, and I can only assume that he explained who we were and what we were trying to do. The ensuing conversation with the strangers became heated. It was at that point that I noticed that we began to group along racial lines. All us black folk knew instinctively that the problem was us. The white members of our party were free to come and go between us and enter into conversation, but the six of us became dumb which I hasten to add was not our usual modus operandi. It was scary. Suffice to say that we were hustled back onto the bus and Romain told us all to shut up if we wanted to get out of there safely. It's a great bit in the book and it's very descriptive of the selector just when you've you, you, you stopped being a sport band you're, you're heading, headlining yourself and it was in a, a club in Leeds and then a lot of people not really sure, you know, the young audience not really sure how to react to the band but as soon as the band start off, every st stand with a pint as you do at gigs, looking a bit, you know, sombre or whatever, and it, waiting to be impressed. But as soon as the, the music started, everybody puts the pint, pints down and started skanking away. Because mm -hmm. that was my experience at the, uh, at the Tiffany's. Big fan of the selector and the period of punk, post-punk music in Britain. And, uh, I love the images as well. You know, it's a really nice document of that, that period as well through a, through a Scottish land. Oh, I'm not sure. I think that, you know, if you look back, you know, some, probably some of these pictures of colour, it would be really, really punchy, you know. I think having them important to play to an extent, you know, Does anyone know how much you're selling it for? I don't know. 